In terms of in terms of the ebooks as part of our portfolio, what the, the position that we've taken is that this is for the past couple of years we've actually been experimenting. I mean, if you've heard that a lot from I think everybody and a lot of people have said that in this room, and it's something you do have to do. You have to experiment. You have to figure out what your comfort level is as a business. You also have to figure out what doesn't work and be willing to make a few mistakes. And I think we've made a few mistakes, nothing dire. Um, but we've also made some really, we've had some good successes as well. But I think that from the, from the marketing and PR end, a lot of what I see my role is doing, and, and this is very different from, I think, traditional publishing now, where traditionally you know, the publisher says, here's my list, here's my book, here you go, marketing, publicity, go at it. Um, this time, I'm actually looking for marketing and publicity to agitate to me, which is in, in for them to say, look, I'm having conversations with this retailer, and they're, they want this product at a certain price. Now, what can we do to try to figure out a way to create something? Um, going back to the pricing question very quickly, the, the position that we've taken is, and I still think this is the right position, is our content, regardless of the platform it is, is has the same value. We're not going to devalue our content. Uh, we're pretty firm about that. Uh, if a retailer wants to discount our price, that's their decision. Uh, and the reality is they're going to. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, they're going to reduce it to $9.99. We're still going to get paid off whatever our discount is off the, off the higher price. So they win because they're driving consumers to their site and getting ebooks purchased. We win because we're getting our traditional discount at the higher price that we want to charge it. Um, where it gets a little bit tricky is there is a consumer expectation. And the consumer expectation is we expect, we believe that e-products should be less expensive. And the reality is, yes, you do save in uh, warehousing costs, you do save in your printing costs, you do save in some other costs, but to still uh, write, edit, layout, create it in the format, whether it's EPUB or whatever it is, and, play, and manage that with the online accounts, there's still a cost associated with that. So where what's happening now with from the, the marketing teams is they're coming to me and saying, look, I've been having conversations with Barnes & Noble, or I've been having conversations with Amazon. Um, actually, lately, it tends to be Apple. I really think they're trying to increase their library, so, um, and they should. But, uh, What's, what's happening is they're saying, look, you know, we understand that you have this guidebook and you want to, or this book, and you want to charge a certain price for it. That's fine. We'll discount it as needed. But there is an interest in this short form. There is this interest in this less expensive product. So instead of trying to do, one, I think there's some very easy things we could do from a publishing end, from a publisher end, which is there's some smart things we could do. We could chunk up content, which is reusing the content. But the reality is, Sometimes you can't afford to do it in the print format and just being able to save that 10% on the printing and the warehousing and everything else just gets you over the hurdle to be able to put it out there, which can allow you to remain competitive. Um, I think, though, that the, the big things that I push on from the marketing, on the marketing and publicity people are discoverability, metadata management, hugely important. Hugely important. Do not underestimate that. One thing that we found is just by the requirements that we were being asked by our accounts in terms of how we did our Onyx feeds, our metadata feeds, is that we were actually hurting ourselves because people couldn't find some of our product online. And so we've actually done some pretty good analysis. And, and in the case of Apple, for example, we, we found that you actually have to, you're, it's, it's, if, if you're doing brand publishing or series publishing, this is going to be more relevant. If you're doing single author publishing um, or trying to promote certain books, this is less relevant. But one thing in the Apple example was we found that if you have the publisher as, say, let's use a different brand, Fodor's, for example, uh, then when a consumer types in Fodor's, they're going to get the list of the books. But if you actually have the author of that China book, it's not going to come up when someone types in Fodor's. Um, or if they type in Fodor's China, it might come up that it'll be like way at the bottom for whatever reason, for whatever the back end is, which I, I don't have visibility to. 
So where I push on marketing is we have to improve our discoverability. I also want to see a product stream coming from them. I want them to agitate me and say, look, we need to find different ways of doing that. And lately we've been doing a lot of experimentation in that regard. So we have done something specifically for Barnes & Noble. We have done something specifically for Amazon. I think you also have to look at exclusivity uh, for a limited time. <laughs> Because, uh, and I say limited time because you're going to piss off all your other retailers if you don't. Um, and I think that the other thing is you have to, uh, I think, I do believe, I do believe this, that free does drive more. Um, but it's being smart about what you offer free. So again, that goes back to when, when marketing agitates for that product. The discussion I want to have with them is, okay, is this a product that we're going to offer for $1.99? In which case, how, what's the return we're going to get on that? Are we going to see some increased sales from that? So we've actually done something recently. Amazon did the Sunshine Deals, and we, we offered them 25, basically many eBooks at $1.99. We saw a 300% increase after that promotion based upon that. So that tells me that there is something in that less expensive product is going to drive more sales because what you're doing is, at least for us, is, is exposing us to a much larger audience that maybe aren't familiar with us, um, just or maybe just have always bought someone else and go, oh, this is interesting. And then for the next time they're going to see an increase or hopefully they'll buy something else. The other thing I'd say is, and this goes back to the discoverability <laughs> issue, is you cannot browse in an online store the same way that you can in the bookstore. And it's sometimes very difficult to, to figure out where to go, what, what you want to see. So again, going back to the discoverability, I cannot, I, I cannot stress that enough how important that is. Okay, well, we have time for a couple more questions, one or two at the most, so please speak up now, as we must uh, vacate the room shortly. Uh, yeah. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, this is a, um, a query that a lot of people are confused about. What, what is the difference between PR and marketing? Can you come up with a definition? I, I, I mean, I have my own that I made up. I, I, they're confused constantly. I'd like to refer to an expert. <laughs> go for it. Yeah. I, I suspect that the lines are drawn differently at different companies, so I can only speak for, for Harper One. But where we have the differentiation is PR is an author's, um, the publicity person is an author's media relations contact, uh, tour coordinator, travel coordinator, um, you know, and, and with media relations, I mean everything from nationals to blogs. It's, it's, it's a huge swath of ground they're covering. In marketing, we're doing, um, we're the conduit to sales. So we're prepping sales on a seasonal basis to go out and sell the books, giving them the tools necessary, populating the catalog, um, giving them sell sheets and all of that. And then we're also doing direct consumer marketing, whether that be, um, and I think actually with publicity, we're sharing now the responsibility of consulting authors on social media presence and building an online platform. We're doing a lot of that in marketing, but publicists are doing a lot of that as well. And, um, and you know, we're placing ads in, in, you know, both online and in print. Adrian, as a senior, I would defer to you, always. You know, um, I, I love publicity because there's not money exchanged. There's not an advertising budget. There's not a pay for play. There's not percentages and ROI. It's all based on the cogency of the idea that you're promoting or the author. So. For me, it's I, I don't think of I think of publicity as not cost related, um, but more creative. Yeah, more relationship uh, relationship based relationships. I mean, it's, we all have relationships yeah, regardless no, if you're a marketer terrible, or a publicist, yeah. but it all comes down to relationships and, and eyeballs. Okay, back. now I saw one one more hand, a, a couple. Well, Michael, it's quickly. The notion of marketing is everything done for a book, trade as well as consumer, everything, a catalog, everything. Anything that's promoted book, internally, externally, creating and so on. Uh, you know, inherent to me in the idea of this panel was the notion that as the culture goes from analog to digital, that everybody uses it has to reinvent themselves. So the real question is how, what's the, most, the best way for publicists to reinvent themselves? I mean, one shift to the, one shift seems to me to be from things you 
publisher do the publisher to publish the to be out for the author. This is less to do than out there than it was. And social media is so important. So how publicists enable authors becomes a really important part of their job. But I mean I, that feels to me yeah, it's definitely. yeah it's like publicity is just one channel of the overall marketing right. spectrum. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, maybe this is a little this, is off this particular topic, but I, I just wanted to kind of comment. It was ni it's nice to hear um, self-publishing come come up, and I also think that as uh, we work for SPD, uh, where we deal with small presses, and uh, the small presses are, are it's interesting how due to the long tail and so forth that that many of the methods that uh, small press authors and we do a lot of poetry in the history of poetry. If I could just revise your your wonderful history. Uh, uh, poets were giving readings in uh, stores and getting to know booksellers and networking among themselves really long before uh, sort of nonfiction. Right, it's another world. Yeah. Even though they never, uh, you know, there, was, there wasn't a moment when they were really uh, uh, terrific bestsellers. But uh, there's a lot in the history of how these poets, uh, you know, how that, that operated that is, I think, pretty uh, re relevant and fascinating to people. Uh, not that you have to uh, study the, uh, the history of poetry, but. Uh, um, well, the history of the publishing poetry is very that interesting. What's happening is that a lot of the, the methods that larger presses uh, have been using for publicity, uh, there is there is an openness to learning from uh, what, what self-publishers, small press authors, how they've been operating already in the past. And uh, it seems like the people that are the most open to that are, you know, borrowing uh, some of those ideas productively. And I think a lot of people up there seem like, I recognize a lot of these methods from uh, reading about the history of 20th and 19th century American poetry. Curiously. I, I'd just like to comment on, on what you said and what Michael said, because I do think that there is a connection. I think right now it's a combination of um, taking our past and traditional methods and combining them with all of these new technologies. And it's a hybrid. It's not just one way. There are many different ways. Like I said, a phone call can be effective. A Facebook campaign can be effective. And you just really need to think about your product and your audience and um, the, the personality of the author and the personality of the book. OK, that, that about does it. One last remark from me, which is, you know, we're all pretty uh, devoted. Everyone in this room is very smart and really loves books and loves continuing to work with books. I know we can figure this out and all survive. So good luck to everyone. Bye-bye.